From the silent films of mainland China and the cinema of Taiwan to the martial arts films of Hong Kong, the visual development that China has had in its three main cinematographic currents is undeniable, which places it as a country that creates great productions that must be recognized in the film industry. Cinema in this region has managed to succeed around the world. At present, each of these currents has created films with strength and potential growth in the industry, to such an extent that it has renowned figures, such as John Wu, Anne Hui, Edward Yang, Ang Lee, or in this case, Wong Kar Wai. This Hong Kong filmmaker is one of the greatest exponents of Chinese and Oriental cinema. His work has influenced several acclaimed films around the world, establishing him as one of the most recognized and admired auteurs in contemporary cinema. Throughout his career, he has developed visually an unmistakable style and a very original aesthetic for his films. He is usually known for shooting without a finished script and creating atmospheres with a mix of colors, sounds, and lights to show us the moods of the protagonists and their stories. His first big opportunity in the film industry came when he co-wrote the screenplay for Patrick Tam's action movie, Final Victory, for which he was nominated at the 7th Hong Kong Film Awards. As a way of thanking him, Tam nurtured Wong Kar Wai's directing aspirations, even supervising the editing on Days of Being Wild a few years later. After co-writing Final Victory, Wong Kar Wai was invited by Alan Tang an important film producer at that time, to become a partner in a new independent company, In Gear Film, and was given the opportunity to direct his own pictures. Tang gave him considerable freedom in the making of his first feature film. In that way, Wong Kar Wai released his debut film, As Tears Go By, a young gangster film, winner in the Hong Kong Film Festival. This film contains many of the characteristics of his later cinema. Wong had a defined style of making films, although this would be perfected with time. The topic of impossible or unrequited love is a characteristic that, both in form and in the background, is portrayed. The introduction of Wong Kar Wai to cinema determined an absolute change in the ways of filmmaking in Hong Kong. With the same visual tools that his colleagues were using to make blockbuster action films, Wong began to make very personal and poetic films, ignoring the rules of narrative development. Wong Kar Wai released Days of Being Wild two years later, which was the first collaboration with Australian cinematographer Christopher Doyle. This film was a more personal project from Wong, set in the 60s and simulating an era he remembered well and had a special feeling for. It was expected to follow the same structure of As Tears Go By, but instead, the film was more concerned with the mood and atmosphere than the narrative. That's why it is commonly described as the first typical Wong Kar Wai film. In addition, there is a technical difference between Days of Being Wild and As Tears Go By, the lack of color and lighting. This is a film about different kinds of depression, and Wong Kar Wai wanted to do it in a monochrome way almost drained of color, as a painting of Edward Hopper, as he once said. After Days of Being Wild was a failure at the box office, Wong Kar Wai had to take an independent way, and with director Jeffrey Liu, founded Jet Tone Films, a production company that allowed him the obsessiveness and slowness that he required for the realization of his films. After several years of work, Wong released Ashes of Time, based on Jing Yong's novel, The Legend of the Condor Heroes. Although it's not the most representative film from the director, it marked a milestone thanks to a well-argued script and rich dialogue, something not very common in the genre. In fact, this film inspired productions such as Ang Lee's Crouching Tiger Hidden Dragon. Some critics called Ashes of Time the most unusual martial arts film ever made and like its predecessor, it became a box office failure. Nevertheless, the film was recognized with an important award in the Venice Film Festival, Cinematography. The keys to the aesthetics of Wong Kar Wai's films are based on lights, colors, or shots that most times have been carried out jointly 
by cinematographer Christopher Doyle. The arrival of this man to the cinema of Wong Kar Wai caused an evident stylization, each time with greater influence. Christopher Doyle understands his filmmaking technique as a response to the everyday life in the city, and his own relationship with the surrounding space contributes to his aesthetics. His gaze in Wong Kar Wai's films is an emotional and celebratory response to Hong Kong and brings attention to his outsider status, which, instead of hindering his enjoyment of the city, provides him with a fresh perspective of it. One of the best cinematography techniques that defines the atmosphere in Wong's films is the step printing effect. When this effect is applied, with the protagonist acting in slow motion, it communicates, in an original way, the alienation and solitude of the characters in relation to the frenetic nature of the overpopulated city of Hong Kong. While Ashes of Time was in its post-production, Wong Kar Wai started a new and refreshing project. He wanted to experiment with three crisscrossing stories in one film, but the lack of time and budget only allowed him to develop two of them. This project was Chongqing Express, whose argument is placed in an opposite dimension to Ashes of Time. The film establishes two independent romantic stories, a melancholic policeman in love with a drug dealer, and the secret love between a waitress and a policeman, dealing with his recent breakup. Wong Kar Wai made this film within only six weeks, shooting at night what had been written that morning. What seemed like a minor project, it became his most relevant work at that time. Sponsored by Quentin Tarantino and with the support of the Cahiers du Cinema magazine, with this film, Wong Kar Wai began to conquer the international film scene. The third story that Wong couldn't develop in Chongqing Express became his next work, Fallen Angels. This film is mainly known for its minimalist plot and its experimental nature, shot almost entirely with an extreme wide-angle lens to emphasize the sensations of the characters. In terms of aesthetics, Fallen Angels marks a milestone in Wong Kar Wai cinema. Unlike its predecessor, this film shows an oppressive but magical atmosphere that manages to capture the bizarre characters in a dark and decadent Hong Kong. Wong Kar Wai continued growing his international reputation with the release of his romantic drama, Happy Together, which was released right before The Handover in 1997 and avoided the financial crisis suffered by the Hong Kong film industry at that time. This film earned him the Palme d'Or as Best Director at the Cannes Film Festival, where he became Hong Kong's first winner of that award. Happy Together was filmed in Argentina, a new world for Wong's filmography at that time. The script is based on Manuel Poig's novel, The Buenos Aires Affair. Wong claims that his non-linear shooting style came from there. The importance of Happy Together lies in the fact that it was one of the first Chinese films that deals with the subject of homosexuality, which was controversial at that time. In addition, this film marked the international success of two of Wong Kar Wai's fetish actors, Tony Leung and Leslie Chung. It's very well known that Wong Kar Wai frequently recasts actors who he has worked with on previous films, and that gives it particular warmth, familiarity, and even continuity to the love shipwrecks that are a common element in his cinema. It's inevitable to feel that their love stories never end, and that in the next film, perhaps, those protagonists will meet again with other names, another reality, and, who knows, a less discouraging ending. After the success of Happy Together, Wong Kar Wai came back to Hong Kong to produce his next feature film, which became his masterpiece and was named one of the greatest films of the 21st century. In the mood for love, this film is authentic poetry and as such, it doesn't matter what it says, but what it suggests. In the mood for love takes us to an intimate territory in Wong's own mind. Memory, time, frustrated love, lack of communication and disagreement. Those are personal experiences we all endure and try to sink into oblivion. The story that counts is twofold. On one hand, the one that comes from the plot and that plays with the disagreements of a pair of lovers in the 60s. On the other hand, the one we each carry within us.
another love story of what could be and never was. In the Mood for Love shares a common spatial feature with Days of Being Wild. Both films concentrate on interior spaces rather than the outdoor spaces of Hong Kong. This city in both films is also characterized by the absence of any recognizable scenery that distinguishes it. This spatial arrangement represents a nostalgic image of 1960s Hong Kong as ambiguous and unfamiliar and reflects the lack of local identity in collective memory. When Hong Kong moved to China in 1997, the Chinese government promised there would be no change for the next 50 years, referring to the economic and political system. The last year without modifications would be then 2046. Wong Kar Wai was attracted by the number but, above all, by the idea of no change. The promise of the Chinese government did nothing more than turn the world around Wong. How would it be a place where nothing changes? Made in this tension-ridden post-colonial era, his next film, 2046, captures Hong Kong in its agonizing struggle with social transformations and identity. Inspired by the political agenda, the director explores the nature of promise and change. The film is, by far, the most overtly political of Wong Kar Wai's films and, along with Days of Being Wild and In the Mood for Love, is considered an informal trilogy in his filmography. The plot of 2046 always leads to the same place, where the loneliness of the characters throws them to find themselves in the unfortunate situation of always arriving too late or too early to the love of their lives. In this film, we find again the narrative influence of Mario Puig, in addition to the traditional musical compositions of Spanish-American influence, such as boleros. In a way, because my mom has a very good taste about music, and Nat King Cole is, is her favorite. And, uh, and when we were very young, we always go to like restaurants um, to have uh, a quick uh, lunch because this is her, her, her habit and and in those days in those restaurants um, especially especially serving like uh, uh, Western food they have music and and because there's a lot of Philippines uh, populations in Hong Kong so the Spanish music actually is very popular so in a way I want to recapture that that period so I, I use um, several a very popular like uh, a Spanish song in a film and somehow I discovered there's uh, a Spanish version sung by the uh, Nat King Cole so I used that in the film as a memory of my mom. Wong Kar Wai left Hong Kong to go to New York to produce his first English language film My Blueberry Nights. This road movie with Nora Jones as the lead, continues to concentrate on the main topics in his stories, love and loneliness. Although Wong Kar Wai moved away from the Hong Kong of the 60s, the New York aesthetic in My Blueberry Nights is not far. It's the same nocturnal urban landscape, with rain, neon lights, and with the same melancholic and lonely characters we all know. It could be said that My Blueberry Nights is a beautiful repetition of the same film he had been shooting all these years. Wong Kar Wai again gave a twist to his work, and it took him around three years to produce his next and last film to date, The Grand Master, a film based on the life story of the Wing Chun Grand Master, Ip Man. The director's style is arranged in an impeccable way to shape a particular martial arts story. Most of the scenes are of a sublime beauty that move and captivate, approaching the oriental culture. This film brings elements such as form, visuals, and themes consistent with his previous work. The Grand Master shows us again that Wong Kar Wai knows how to introduce us better than anyone else in Chinese culture, which may seem very distant to us, but through his careful shots, brings us closer to this story about honor, tradition, and justice. This film will be considered one of the most relevant works in Wong Kar Wai's filmography, mainly for its high technical and artistic level in terms of visual and aesthetic aspect, which were developed by the production designer William Chang. For this and all of Wong Kar Wai's films, 
Much credit must go to this man, who is best known as art director, costume designer, production designer, and editor. William Chang creates worlds as he thinks they should seem, just the right interiors in which he can see the actors, wearing just the right colors. Christopher Doyle and William Chang have been an elementary part of Wong Kar Wai's work. Without the support of these creative minds, he would hardly have achieved the wonderful and distinctive aesthetic that is evident in his cinema. Through his films, Wong Kar Wai has developed his own visual and narrative style to represent, in a personal way, his conception of love and loneliness, which place his work as auteur cinema. We could say that, for him, love is intriguing in its relationship with people. His stories are inconclusive and let us think there is always something after the end of each film, which leads us to the conclusion that Wong Kar Wai doesn't tell us a story, he tells us an experience.